Have you ever wondered what the Earth's acceleration at this very moment is due to the Sun's gravity? Probably not. But you may have wondered why we do not fall off roller coasters when we go upside down on loops. And did you know that the same science is applied while releasing artificial satellites into the Earth's orbit? And by cyclists and circuses. This concept is called centripetal acceleration. We find examples of centripetal acceleration all around us. Be it an athlete moving in a circular track or a car moving in a circular path or taking an example from a childhood favorite, Matilda. How can you bat? Finding centripetal acceleration is simple. V square upon R, where V is the speed of the object and R is the radius of the path traversed by it. In the case of motion in one dimension or motion in a straight line, we can show the acceleration through a velocity time graph. Instantaneous acceleration can be calculated by gradually reducing the time period till it is very small. You must be careful while doing this, for if the time period is too long, you will not be calculating the instantaneous acceleration, but the average velocity. However, graphical representation is restricted to only showing the acceleration when the velocity is changing in magnitude, but not in direction. When a body is moving in a circular path with a constant speed, we can say that it has uniform speed. But we cannot say that it has uniform velocity because its direction is constantly changing with every change in its position. Hence we say that the body is accelerating since acceleration is change in velocity over time. In this kind of motion, we cannot cal calculate the instantaneous acceleration graphically. So this is where the formula for centripetal acceleration comes of use. I will be teaching you how to derive it. There are a few basic concepts that you must know. Acceleration is equal to change in velocity over change in time. Theta upon time is equal to angular speed, which is denoted by omega. Speed is equal to radius into omega. Now, let's take a case where I have a ball tied to a rope and I keep swinging it in a circular path of radius r with uniform speed v. Notice that I have not put an arrow over the v. That is because it is a scalar quantity, not a vector one. So the v only denotes the magnitude of the ball's velocity. Now, let's assume that I have velocity v1 at point A and velocity v2 at point B. Therefore, the acceleration would be equal to v2 minus v1 upon t. Since the ball is moving with a uniform speed, the magnitude of the velocities will remain the same, whereas the direction will keep on changing. Therefore, the size of the arrows will be the same, but the direction in which the point will not. Acceleration is equal to v2 minus v1 upon t, which is equal to the v2 plus minus v1 upon t. We can show the vectors as the respective arrows. This is v2 and plus v1. To show minus v1, we change the direction of the arrow. Now we place the two arrows head to tail. We now draw the resultant vector, which is the change in velocity. Now let's say that when the ball moves it, from A to B, it covers an angular distance of theta. Now let us try to find the angle between the two vector arrows. I have now extended the two vectors till they intersect to find the angle between them. Since v1 and v2 are tangents to the circle, they will be perpendicular to the radii. Now, let us draw a line parallel to OA. 
From that, we can figure out the angles of the new triangle formed. And this is how we find out that the angle between the two vectors is equal to theta. If we wish to find the instantaneous acceleration at a point, we must take two points on the circle which are very close to each other and have a very small angle theta between them. Now, let us look at these two velocity vectors. Since the lengths are the same, they can be the radii of a circle. Look at the circle formed by them. We have already found that chord AB is equal to delta V. You would notice that as theta gradually becomes smaller, the arc AB and chord AB slowly come together till they are almost equal. Now to calculate the centripetal acceleration, we need to look at a very small time interval where the velocity vectors are almost touching and the angle theta is extremely small. In such a case, you can say that delta V is equal to the arc. Now theta is defined as arc upon radius. In this circle, the arc is equal to delta V and the radius is equal to the velocity. Hence, theta is equal to delta V upon V. v. Now we bring V to the left hand side of the equal to sign and we get V theta is equal to delta V. Let's divide both sides of the equation by T. So on the left side, we have delta V by T, which is the acceleration and it is equal to v theta upon t. Now I have already told you that theta upon t is angular speed omega. Therefore, v theta upon t is v omega. So now we get the equation acceleration is equal to omega v. I also told you the relation between v and omega which is v is equal to r omega. From that we get the second equation, omega is equal to v upon r. Now if we put the value of omega in the first equation, we get acceleration is equal to v square upon r. And that is the formula for centripetal acceleration.